Hey everyone, have you ever felt accomplished for going even in a counterpick matchup? Or when you have a CS lead? Well, you shouldn't. It seems to be a common misconception to think going even or having a small lead is okay in low elo. It never is, and if you go even or only have a small lead, you deserve to lose the game, as you should never be going even against players that have no idea what they're doing. You're probably thinking one of two things at this point though. First, what about counterpicks? I'm not supposed to win those. Or second, how can you say we have no idea what we're doing, gold is better than most, or whatever. Don't worry, I'm going to tackle both of these with multiple replays. I'm going to break down the start of the laning phase from a few different gold games where the person that lost or went even is counterpicked, but show you how the matchup was actually straight up irrelevant, since both players are going to be trolling the entire time. So let's just jump right into this first game where we have a traditional counter matchup with Fizz vs. Cassidy. Right off the bat, Fizz just starts trolling. I'm not sure why he walks up in his auto attack in the backline like this. Then when Kasten walks into lane, Fizz goes for a trade in all six of Kasten's minions. Of course, Fizz is going to lose this trade extremely hard, and honestly, it could have been even worse. Kasten should have realized Fizz was trolling going for that, and went all in until Fizz got into his own wave. And lastly, Fizz didn't even pop his corrupting potion while trading. All this was just completely wrong. It should be obvious that this had nothing to do with the matchup. If we reversed it and Kasten walked into Fizz's minions, Fizz would win just like Kasten just did. Fizz should be standing near the melee minions, and when Kasten Q is down, Fizz wants to use W to contest the CS since Kasten can't auto attack him back. If Kasten uses Q to get a last hit, and not an auto attack, that's a win for Fizz. On top of this, since Fizz is actually stronger than Kasten at level 1, by doing what I just said, he will naturally slowly push the wave into Kasten. But by spam auto attacking, he's going to be crashing the waves one or two at a time, which doesn't give him any real advantages. He wants to stack up three waves, then crash. And you'll see why in a little bit. Anyways, after that terrible trade, He's going to be doing what I said, constantly autoing the wave and grabbing last hits. And after clearing the first wave, he puts a completely random ward here. He's against Zed Jungle, which literally can't gank at level 2, so it makes no sense. Getting back into laning though, at this point Fizz will be 1 minion away from level 2. He's going to have a slight minion advantage, so he can still be contesting Kasten's last hits with his W, especially if Kasten Q is down. But as we can see, Kasten is able to farm a lot of this under tower since Fizz pushed too fast. If we pause here though, you see that CS Kasten is about to go for? The low health range minion? That's exactly what Fizz should be looking at. He should be standing basically right next to it. If Kasten walks up to get it, Fizz should punish with W, or he can even stay where he is and use E to jump in, then use W. Either way, if Kasten gets the CS for free, they're both trolling, because Kasten should never walk up for it. I'm sure you can guess what happens next. They both are trolling, just like every other gold game. Again, look at this low health range minion, same exact concept as the previous one, and again, it goes unpunished. In what world would a level 2 Fizz be clicking backwards versus a level 1 Kasten? that's walking into Fizz's wave. If Kasten used his Q on Fizz, it will aggro all of those minions, so even if Fizz just stood still and didn't touch him, Kasten would still lose the trade. After this, Fizz is trying to clear the rest of these minions under tower, and Kasten also hits level 2. If he was pushing properly, like we talked about earlier, Fizz will always be 1 level up on Kasten, so Fizz will be level 3 when Kasten's level 2. Also, Kasten could freeze the wave here, putting Fizz in a spot where he could be ganked easily. This is another problem with the autopilot pushing that Fizz has been doing. Kasten just needs to walk up and prevent these 3 ranged minions from getting into tower range. Like I said, since both players have no clue what they are doing, neither of them make the right play. After the wave crashes, this is when Fizz should walk into top river and drop a ward, but he already wasted it in bot brush, so he's just running in circles not knowing what to do. Now that the third wave is here, both players are about to troll hard once again. Kasten walks up and uses Q on Fizz, and if we slow it down, notice how Kasten doesn't turn around or run away from Fizz when Fizz uses E to jump in here. It should be obvious that Fizz will try to use E to dodge Kasten and Q, since that's what all the low elo Fizz players do. Because of this, Fizz E kills the magic shield Kasten got, then Fizz uses auto and W for electrocute, and they basically trade evenly. If Kasten actually walked backwards a step or two after throwing Q, and Fizz jumped in like this, Fizz E wouldn't break Kasten's magic shield, and the shield would eat Fizz W, making him do very little damage. Then Fizz would have been punished for jumping into a cannon wave like this. This was just as bad as the level 1 trade. Now, both players about to hit level 3, if either of them just used their potions, they could have the HP to bully the other off the wave so they could hit level 3 first, but they don't feel like using them. Since Fizz is playing more confidently, he's going to hit level 3 first, which shouldn't happen after he messed up the wave control. Kasten should actually hit level 3 first here, but right after Fizz hits level 3, which gives him an advantage, notice Kasten once again walking up for a last hit he shouldn't walk up for, and it goes unpunished. He was only level 2. Surprisingly, Fizz does one thing properly in this entire lane here. When he jumps on Kasten and trades like this, using his E to avoid the tower shot. It wasn't perfect, but it was the right idea. He should have used Q, auto, then W, but he did just Q and W. Either way, it was the only thing he did that even came close to correct. And look at Kasten's HP. He doesn't have much left, because he has three potions still. 
So imagine if Fizz was punishing CS properly, trading properly, controlling the wave even close to how he was supposed to. Obviously, Castanip would probably be dead by this point. But after Fizz crashes the wave again, he does the same trade under tower, so my bad, he actually does two things right in these first few minutes of laning. He's almost out of mana now, and has no potions. Fizz full combo costs 175 mana. Kastin has TP, so Fizz should have recalled after the previous wave. Then Fizz would have come back to lane before Kastin could crash the wave, and Kastin would be forced to recall on a bad wave and use TP to get back. But he's just going to keep pushing and using W on every single last hit, so he wastes more mana, which is another thing he's been doing wrong the entire lane. Using Fizz W to get a last hit doesn't completely refund the mana. You still have to use a little bit. But the enemy jungler comes to gank now. What do you think Fizz should do here? Try to kill Zed? Try to kill Cassidy, Or just try to survive the gank? Let's start with the wrong answers. He shouldn't try to kill Cassidy because Cassidy's level 4 with a passive that lets him take 10% less magic damage. And he's under tower. He could potentially kill him, but he's going to 100% die in the process, and still might not even get the kill if Kazan uses Flash properly. C isn't correct either, because that would mean he's letting players that are trolling get away with it. This gang from Zed is very bad for two reasons. And that means A is the correct answer. But the two reasons are, first, Fizz has a cannon wave walking up right now, so Zed is going to get aggro of all of that. And the second is, Zed is only level 3, ganking a lane where Kazan is half health with no ignite, so he won't be able to help much. Basically, if we take Kassin out of this entirely, you could see Fizz would hard win this 1v1, right? So Fizz should basically just auto Z and move backwards until he's low enough to burst with Ignite, Q, and W. Fizz wouldn't even need his E. Just look at how much damage the wave does to Zed with Fizz using literally zero abilities. It did half of his health, but Fizz misplays extremely hard anyways and still dies of this awful gank and doesn't even ignite the Zed to trade one for one. And if you're wondering how easy it was to survive this, all Fizz had to do was walk in front of Zed so Fizz could use Q to go through him, then use E right after. That would put him out of Zed's W range and make him completely safe. Alright, so now that we know how every single player in this game has zero clue what they are doing, can you really say that going even is okay in Loilo? Of course not. There were 50 mistakes from everyone that went unpunished, and on top of this, did the matchup have anything to do with how this lane went? Not even close. Let's look at one more game though, from the same rank, and use a different counter matchup. This one we have Orianna vs Echo, another traditional counter pick. Echo wins versus Ori because he can use his E to jump in on Ori when she moves the ball. Then when he procs his passive, his move speed is so high, he can easily avoid her return damage. But as we jump into it, Ori actually starts laying off properly. She throws Q right away and hits Echo with it. That's exactly what she should do. Not only does it get the ball out and poke Echo, but it puts the ball in a spot where she can easily move it to poke when Echo goes for last hits. Things go downhill quickly though, as both players start trolling as expected. Echo, for whatever reason, is auto-attacking melee minions. He should never be able to do this. Why? Because if Ori auto attacks Echo when he's standing there, Echo's range minions won't aggro Ori. The range minions are always the ones you have to worry about. This means whenever Echo walks up to, or past, his melee minion line, Ori should be autoing him. But she doesn't, and he's just running around in circles. Now, not only does this mean she's missing out on a ton of free harass, but it goes further than that. By auto attacking Echo, Echo would quickly realize he can't just sit there and auto minions. So, Ori would naturally get the push advantage, which is what she wants in a ranged with melee matchup. Doesn't matter if it's a counter pick, if an Ori is level 2 to Echo level 1, or Ori level 3 to Echo level 2, Ori wins. But because she doesn't punish him for trolling and autoing minions this far up, she's not going to get the push advantage, which means she's not going to be able to take advantage of the first 3 levels when melee champions are at their weakest. Anyways, Ori continues to let Echo auto minions and do whatever he wants, and Echo throws a Q which misses. Ori collects some CS and moves up finally, looking like she's going to poke. But Echo is all the way back here now, so what made her think that now was the time to do this and not before? Then, my poor eyes have to witness Echo walk up to these minions, throw Q through them, and collect them without any punish from Ori. It hurts to watch, really. Echo has one singular minion to defend him, but he's overextending for this anyways. It doesn't even try to throw Q at Ori to potentially cover him while he's going for these, and she just walks away entirely. At least she throws Q at the very end, I guess. The next wave is here though, and the waves are completely even. Obviously this shouldn't be happening. So you can see how letting Echo do whatever he wants, when he's not even a champion at level 1, was a big deal. Now let's actually shift the view to Echo for this next part. He autos minions and notice he's one minion from level 2, meaning he's about to hit level 2 before Ori, which should never happen. But this means he should kill the minion and immediately jump in to punish her if she's in range. He should walk up and kill the red minion that's closer to Ori, so he's closer to her when he levels up. As expected, both players are straight up griefing, Ori is actually walking forwards towards Echo when he's about to hit level 2, and Echo throws his Q through the minions, so he doesn't have it to trade with, hits level 2, and doesn't even jump in to punish. Watching this gameplay makes me sick, so we're just going to stop it here, both players end up 0-0 at 10 minutes anyways. 
Alright, so again, does it seem like matchup mattered at all? It shouldn't. Does it seem okay to be going even when both players are trolling the entire lane? Of course it shouldn't. You need to be punishing these mistakes and stomping your lane in every game in low elo. So you might be asking yourself why go to skillcap.com to improve when I could just watch YouTube guides or play the game. Well, let me show you. Let's say you're a mid laner who's struggling to climb the ladder. Not only would you get over 70 site exclusive courses for mid lane, but maybe really what you've been struggling with is trading as a mid laner. Well, we got you covered with four different courses breaking down how to trade as a mid laner. Not only do we have the largest catalog of guides for League of Legends in the entire world with over 1500 videos to watch, but these are then curated by the top coaches and players into courses on every skill and topic you need to master in order to truly improve and climb the ladder. If all of this wasn't enough, we haven't even touched on our catalog of over 700 smurf commentaries where a challenger expert shows you how to climb out of your rank and you're guaranteed to get any questions answered by them directly. Not to mention, we're the only service to offer a rank improvement guarantee. If you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using Skillcap, you can claim a refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Head to skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. But that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope this gave you a lot to think about and we'll see you in the next one.